Hey guys, this is Brett from Apex Custom Rifles. Today what I got here is one of these new Aero Precision Solus Action. So I'm going to go through this thing a little bit and uh, just give you a perspective of it from someone that builds rifles. Um, give you some of my thoughts on it. Just some random stickers, whatever in there. Something you really don't need, but some people like that. So here's what you get when you order this thing. I think these retail MSRP around $8.99, give or take. Uh, your action, you get a barrel nut, and they're supposed to be Savage Small Shank, I think Origin, same thing. Uh, they give you the wrench for the barrel nut, which is nice. They give you the bolt, of course, and last but not least, here's their trigger hanger. So let me get this uh, straightened out and we'll take a further look at it here. Well, here are all the bits and pieces laid out in front of us. First impression, um, you know, the action doesn't look too bad. It's a one-piece action. It's all milled as one piece. Uh, integral lug, integral pick rail, and I believe it's 20-minute rail. Um, three lug. Don't quote me on all the specs on it. We can uh, post those up, but uh, it does have a trigger hanger, which is an interesting option for this one and I was a little bit skeptical about this because on the front end of this there's a little knob on there and that knob fits inside there and there's a little T10 torque screw that fits in there I think what I'm gonna do here is I'll, I'll do two videos this will just be a kind of an overview of it and then I'll put it uh, together and we'll test it and we'll do some measuring on it in another video and see how it lines up but once we get that uh, torque screw in there our trigger hanger is nice and solid. Uh, I can feel no wiggle, uh, nothing in there. So, actually probably not a bad design. If you, for some reason, wanted to swap out triggers quick, it would be a relatively simple thing to do. And of course, trigger most trigger hangers, you put the pins in to put your trigger in. So that's kind of standard for a trigger hanger. Uh, not much to talk about with this. I probably personally won't use this because this is not uh, typically how I, I usually shoulder barrels because I can do them myself and I do them for other folks all the time. But the heart of the whole operation here. So this is a, I believe it's a, I want to say 70 or 60 degree throw. Not bad. I'm going to probably stick this in a chassis and we'll see how it cycles with the trigger in the next video. But a couple things to notice here. Um, the bolt stop, that's a sliding bolt stop. And you do have to slide it forward to release the bolt. It is pretty smooth, I must say. It is nitrided, and I can't, I uh, don't know the specs on this, but I think it's a, I'm not gonna tell the specs. We'll check out the specs and we'll see. But it's pretty smooth. Not bad. So we're going to take this thing out and we're going to look at it a little further here. This is cut for AW and AICS mags. Um, that looks like it's pretty well machined. A uh, little Allen screw for the bolt stop. It does have two vents. Being a three lug, probably a good idea. Two vents in case you have a uh, overpressure situation where you need to vent a little gas. Uh, the three lugs. This bolt is a full diameter with the lug bolt recesses cut into the bolt head. So it's not a typical, if you can see in there, it's just a round. It's not a typical like a 700 where you get lug ways, lug race ways. Let's take this bolt apart. So this is kind of a nifty little thing and I didn't notice this when I ordered it, but this has uh, a dual cocking cam here and I think there are some others on the market that do similar things, but there's a top cocking cam and there's the bottom cocking cam. And I just, I cocked it, so, or I decocked it, so hold on, let me uncock it quick. Recock it, sorry. This is a quick release, so you turn it clockwise and that whole system comes out of there. And to remove this, it looks like it does have, let me see here. There is a little set screw in there, an Allen screw, and I suppose, like a lot of 
typical rifles. Compress this, release that, and this should all come apart. I did notice there is a little bronze. It appears to be a bronze bushing in there. I'm not quite sure if that's just a, just a bushing right there or if it goes all the way through. I'm not sure. I might take this apart in the next video. We'll see. But you can clearly see the dual cocking cams there. Interesting, nice feature. It, the idea behind that is it keeps, when you cock it, it's supposed to keep the bolt from rising as much. But um, good idea. Also, let me grab some uh, calipers here. Well, here we go. Some. We're going to measure this, the, the front of the firing pin here. Because I think this is cut straight, which is a very nice feature and mostly only seen on higher end um, rifles, custom rifles. So that's at 152, maybe not, maybe I just can't measure it. 152. So yeah, this portion of the firing pin is straight. And let's go over here and look at the bolt. I wipe my hands off here. The they designed this thing with a removable bolt head, which is kind of a you know it's a good idea if you if you want to do that. So in order to remove this, you take of course your firing pin mechanism out here. There is a cross pin in here that holds a bolt head, and we can take our firing pin and just gently push that guy out, and that comes out. You can see it's retained by the firing pin when the firing pin is in there, and this comes out. So if we wanted to change bolt heads in the future when they option when they give that as an option, we can go through and go to a Magnum or uh, this is a 478 bolt head or you know 223 whatever. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I noticed when looking in here, this the internal bore for the firing pin is also straight. So this whole section here, when we put it on there, it's pretty straight. And we pull it out and we try and wiggle it and it doesn't really, we get out here because we're getting into the, the opening and it's gonna wiggle a little bit, but we get past that and there's very little play. So like I said, this is a feature of a lot of custom actions. And also uh, you can have these, a lot of guys will bush their firing pin holes on like 700s and actions like that to try and obtain this. For the rifle to get very centered firing pin strikes and I don't have gauge pins here but looking at the firing pin hole it is very tight it's probably about as tight as if I did one on the lathe that's about where I'd want it maybe a few three four five thousandths maybe clearance in there so this is a pretty nice feature I think on this thing the firing pin um, being straight like that. That's a nice little feature in this guy. Putting her back together, there is a little de I don't know if you want to call it a detent or a, a bump there. And there's a adjacent uh, spot there, so you always get it right in the back, right in the back spot, right in the correct spot again. And this is pretty simple. There is a little line on here to indicate it, the hole, although the hole line goes up and down and then the hole goes sideways I guess so we put that in there we wiggle it around a little bit and it pops right back in place this let's see if this goes in more than one way nope that only goes in one way like it should the top detent is smaller than the bottom one so this will only go in the correct way so to get that back in we push it and rotate it it clicks back into place and there we go there's our bolt back in place pretty cool all right the next thing I'm gonna mention here is um, this rail looks fine to me most modern bases will fit right into this guy I noticed it is scalloped on the bottom there it's something I just noticed but most of your uh, 1913 pick rail stuff should fit on there just without an issue um, as far as the builder's aspect of this guy, I mean, these things are designed, the primary goal, I think, was to, to make an action that you can buy a barrel, um, you know, pre-threaded, pre-chambered, 
you screw it on and you know you got whatever you want for me i tend i like i said i shoulder barrels a lot so i'm gonna stick this thing on the lathe in the next video and we're gonna true it up and we're gonna check to see how true it is i'm not gonna i'm probably not gonna cut on it uh quite yet but just looking at the outside appearance of this thing and how it would go together say if we bedded it so a lot of the rifles that I, pretty much all the rifles that I build, get full bedding jobs in them. And just looking this thing over, a couple things I noticed. This really isn't a big deal. I see there is a proud area here on the front of the receiver ring. Um, why that's there, I'm not sure. It might just be for shouldering. They wanted it up a little higher for shouldering that barrel nut. Not sure, but not that it's a big deal, but it's there. Uh, our threads are back, starting back a little bit. And the other thing I noticed here on this thing was, um, you know, overall the machining on this thing looks pretty good. It's pretty smooth. You can see, I don't know if they, they ground it or what they did here, but you can see some little lines there, not a big deal. I mean, there you can kind of see it. But all in all, the finish of this thing is pretty good, I'd say. Nitrided, not a bad looking action. Uh, the thing I did notice is this cut right here. I'm not sure why they did this. I think it's just to get back in here and cut the back side of the recoil lug. I don't know why they cut it lower than the rest of the receiver. Um, not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, but I would think it would be nice just to have that all the same. That's a minor inconvenience to me. The other thing I did notice here was on the side of the recoil lugs. And this isn't going to matter for most people that probably put this in a chassis or put this in some sort of a setup where they don't need to bet it. But I tend to bet a lot of the stuff or quite a bit, if not all of the stuff I do. And there is a little tiny lip right there. Let me grab a pointer and I'll show you. So right there, I can, I can grab onto it and it's just a little lip. So what that is going to cause is when we go to full length bed this thing, I don't always put tape on the sides of these things. I Actually, I typically don't put tapes on the sides of these things because I don't want this thing rocking at all in there. However, this is recessed a little bit. So in order to full length bed this thing, we're going to have to put some sort of putty or something in there to fill that up because if we bed this without doing anything to this, paying any attention to that, that's going to have a little lip in there. And it's going to be probably pretty hard to get out, and when you pull it out, it's probably going to wreck your bedding job when you pull that out. So this is a little, hmm, I want to say oversight <laughs> uh, to aero precision, but I would think they could get rid of this if they really wanted to. That would be a, a programming thing within their system to get rid of that little thing there. I don't know why it's there. Get rid of it, make it smooth. You know, a lot of these actions, not all of them, but some of them are tapered. I don't know, I don't believe this one is tapered, you know, top to bottom. But we need to get rid of that, or we need to address that when we go to full length bed that thing. So that would be an issue. Uh, other than that, I mean, pff, doesn't look that bad. It's, uh, it looks like a pretty serviceable item. The price, eh, I'll let you decide on the price. That's not, uh, I'm not going to comment on the price, but the MSRP at $899, I think they might come in a little lower than that. I think on my site I'll list them a little lower than that, but um, nice, nice action there. I think for the price, it'll probably fill a market for some people. Um, and yeah, oh, a couple other things. Let's talk about the bolt face here and the bolt head. So this does have it, what appears to be a little sliding plate ejector on there. So you can see a little T-slot in there, a little sliding plate, and it's got dual plungers. Dual offset plungers. I suppose they want to make sure that thing gets out of there. And as we look at it, as it's in, if you can see it in there, it's going to kick it out pretty much at a 
you know, 180 degrees. I think that's the goal, or to get it up in there. So, um, other than that, that's about it. That's, I think, all I got to say about it right now. All in all, I think the machining overall is pretty decent. I haven't, of course, chambered it or anything like that, put a barrel on it, but um, I think what I'm going to do in my next video is we'll stick it, we'll stick a trigger on it, we'll stick it in a chassis, we'll see how it cycles, how it runs. Uh, I don't know if I have a barrel around here that I can throw on it, but we'll do that. And then we'll also stick it in a lathe and take some measurements on it and see how some of these measurements go. And we'll check the timing a little bit here and see how the timing works with uh, probably a trigger, trigger tech trigger that I got sitting around here. But anyways, that's kind of what I noticed on this action. It's, it's kind of a new thing out there as of uh, you know late January, early February 2023 here. So if it's something that you're considering, you know, for the price point, it's probably not a bad deal. You get some pretty nice features on this thing for the price. The integral rail, the, the firing pin, that's basically a bushed firing pin that's designed that way. Um, the removable bolt head, the quick uh, removal of the firing pin assembly, uh, and the integral lug, and it's nitrided. So you're getting some value. I think it's, it's, it's a, who knows, time will tell. It might be a pretty, pretty nice setup for some people. That's kind of my take on it. Uh, if you got any comments, questions, let me know below. And as always, subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the little ding notification up there, the little bell. Let you know next time I put out a video for you guys. So stay tuned till the next one. We're going to put out another one here, uh, going a little deeper into this thing and seeing what we can figure out about it and, and give you guys a good idea of uh, what you want to do with it and if it might be the right option for you. So till next time, see you guys. Take care.